Today we will review an EEG from a patient with Lafora body disease. So the first question is what is Lafora body disease? This is one of the progressive myoclonic epilepsies. It presents typically in late childhood around 15 or 16 years of age. It starts with cognitive decline and then you start seeing multiple seizure types. Occipital lobe seizures and myoclonic seizures are the frequent seizures early on but then you also start seeing frequent tonic-clonic seizures and atypical absence seizures. As the disease progresses, the child starts presenting with ataxia, dysarthria, and this all eventually leads to a severe dementia. Most patients do not survive beyond 25 years of age, but there are cases that survive much longer than that. Lafora bodies are clumps of abnormal glycogen that cannot be broken down and used for fuel. Please look at the reference that's provided in this slide. Lafora body disease can be diagnosed by the clinical presentation. So the clinical presentation is a highly functioning child all of a sudden starts having cognitive decline and multiple seizure types, especially myoclonic seizures. And then a skin biopsy can be done for Lafora bodies and genetic testing can be done for specific genes called EPM2A and NHLRC1 gene. Unfortunately, this do disease does not have a cure. Patients are treated for epilepsy and seizures and provided supportive care. So let's look at some of the EEGs from these patients. Depending on at what stage of the disease you see the patient, you may find some posterior dominant rhythm early on, but as the disease progresses, you start seeing a lot of slowing in the background. For people who are new on the channel, just a brief introduction about EEG. The channels that end with the odd number are recording from the left side of the brain. The channels that end with an even number are recording from the right side of the brain. And channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. So as with the neurological examination, when you're looking at the EG, you always compare the left hemisphere to the right hemisphere. So if we compare the left side and the right side, we do not see a whole lot of asymmetry. We see prominent delta activity. So let me show you some delta activity. This is, these are the delta waves that you're seeing here. So there is some prominent delta activity here. You are also, delta activity is also obvious right here. Pretty much all over the all over this page, you can see a lot of delta activity. There are faster frequencies that overlie the delta activity, so you can see some of those faster frequencies there. You can see the sharp waves. So there, these are the sharp waves, which are frontally dominant sharp waves. So you can see these sharp waves in a generalized distribution. You can also see some of these spikes in the midline, and a lot of fast activity, beta activity that is seen throughout this page. If we move on to the next page, we see more or less similar activity. So a lot of delta activity, a lot of theta activity with superimposed fast activity. We see a lot of spikes and poly spikes in a generalized distribution here. In fact, we also see sharps in multiple locations. If you see spikes and sharp waves in three or more different locations, you can call these multifocal sharp waves or multifocal spikes, which is seen in this EEG. The other thing to keep in mind is there is no posterior dominant alpha rhythm. So if you look at the parietal occipital head region, you do not see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm. These EEG samples are from different times. This is not just one EEG. So over a few years, I've gotten EEG on this patient on multiple occasions, and these are some samples from different times. You can see the generalized slowing here. You are able to identify the spike in wave discharges here, generalized spikes, and then you can see a lot of sharp waves in different locations, multiple locations. Same thing here, there is some artifact. This is artifact right here. 
you see a lot of fast activity, you see a lot of sharps, you see a lot of low amplitude spikes on this EEG. You can see sharp waves even on the midline here in, in the midline electrodes. This is an EEG taken from a different time. This was a few years before the above EEGs were taken. Here you do not see all those spikes and sharp waves. You do see, you do appreciate some low amplitude sharps, but not as frequent as you saw in the previous slides here. Delta activity is also prominent here. You are able to see the delta activity. You are able to see the slowing. You are able to see some theta activity that's overriding the delta activity. But this EEG does not look as bad as the other EEG that I showed you. This is another EEG that was done a few years before the above EEGs. You are able to see the sharp waves here. So this is, these are the sharp waves that you are able to appreciate. So these are sharp waves in, this is more in the left front or central region. And this is more in the left temporal. This one is more in the left temporal. This one is the in, more in the left front or central head region. What about this EEG? So this EEG was done at the time patient was receiving some propofol. So patient was on a small dose of propofol. You see some frontal dominant alpha. So normally when a person is getting propofol, you can see shifting of the alpha frequencies from the posterior parietal occipital head region to more of the frontal head region. There is a lot of delta activity here as well. These big delta waves are quite prominent here. You can see the delta activity. You can see the superimposed fast activity. During this time, patient was having a lot of muscle twitching and you can see some muscle artifact in these different locations. This is another EG with generalized spikes that are quite prominent. And then you can also see some sharp waves that are not as widely distributed. This EEG was done while the patient was receiving propofol. So the patient had come in with generalized tonic-clonic status epilepticus. And this EEG was done in the intensive care unit. You can see these generalized bursts of spikes and polyspikes. But in the me you also see areas of suppression here. So these periods of suppression, and that was during propofol infusion. This is yet another EEG with generalized slowing, a lot of sharp waves. But here you're also starting to see spikes and sharp waves more in the occipital head region. And these are the occipital sharp waves in the left and right occipital head region. So as I told you previously, patients with Lafora body disease can have occipital lobe seizures. And sometimes these uh, occipital lobe seizures are only seen on the EGs. So as in this case, the patient was having some ocular twitching and you can see these runs of polyspikes in the O1 and O2 contacts. So the spikes are quite prominent here. This is another one where patient was having some in intermittent twitching and there was prominent occipital spikes. You can see those independently in both parietal left and right parietal head region. So you can see it in the right occipital region here. You can see it in the left occipital region here. So patient had spikes and then you see generalized bursts of spikes and polyspikes. So the EEG, the patient uh, was having very frequent seizures at this time and patient was on mega doses of different anti-epileptic medications. This is the last slide here. And again, you can see a lot of spikes. You can see a lot of sharp waves. You can see fast activity. You can see underlying slow delta and theta frequencies. So this is basically an advanced case of Lafora body disease with a lot of abnormalities. I'm sure there is some variation from patient to patient, but this at least gives you an idea of what to expect in patients with Lafora body disease. Thank you for your attention. I strongly recommend that you review progressive myoclonic epilepsies. So if you're a resident and you've not seen progressive myoclonic epilepsies, go and look for the different types of progressive myoclonic epilepsies. It will help you with your examination and it will also help you with your clinical practice. Thank you for your attention.